Pascal, the philosopher. Um, he was, he was, long time ago was talking about identity, and he was saying something like, more or less, I don't remember the exact words, but he was saying something like, without these nose, is still me, and without these ears, this is still me, and without these eyes, this is still me. In which moment, I stop being me because without some of the features of the pieces of my face of my of my body i start losing my soul and so the identity is go is been there for a long time and i don't know how you see disconnected with the evolution of the internet until nowadays i think it's a really interesting point of view and i mean i think we are again in a new um let's say in a new space where we can again ask this type of questions um like not talking about reality but about digitally i, I mean how much of, of our self we have to put in our identity to be ourself and how much of our private life or or, or body form or even our inside or our soul, let's call it like this, um, we have to share it to be us, no? And, and I think it's an interesting concept, especially with internet and how it, it, it had an evolution maybe from the first internet where the, the identity or the real person was not that much important. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were a lot of nicknames or pseudonymous <laughs> or anonymous people building all these networks. But then with the time we reach into a point where the identity and the name and the and, and your physical form started to have a lot of um, importance and how it's kind of going back again and you can more or less hide in different identities without losing the control of your own self mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's call it so yeah maybe in the beginning maybe because of the technical limitations, the visual size of the personality and the identity was not so relevant, and you were a nickname, and with okay. that it was enough, and the and the person on the other side of the screen was just happy with that because you were I don't know who, but it was just your nickname in Twitter or your okay. email account or something like that. But then, and you remember the way the the screen was loading the images this way so slowly, and you were with your so a slow connection to the internet so the images were like something not working very well but with the evolution you, the audiovisual is is taking more and more importance and you are not anymore just a nickname and you have to translate yourself because you are physical you have to be recognizable and you have to be also visual it's not only a nickname but how how is your aspect and but I think there is a difference too from like, like what, what you were saying at, at the beginning. No, if I don't have a nose or I don't have legs, at the end that's something that in the physical world you cannot fake mm -hmm. or you cannot mm, do a projection of your own identity like you want. So you mm -hmm. are who you are and you cannot get rid of it. You can just dress different, but really you cannot be a different person, right? I think internet gives us this chance mm -hmm of being whoever we want to be. So at some point we can be our real self, but we can be a superhero version of ourselves. Or So at the end, in this digital world, there is the possibility of projecting yourself in a different identity um, or in a different character than your real one, maybe. Mm -hmm. So and do you think that, do you think that really the internet at the moment, the person is in the center of the internet? And do you think that this connects to the essence of the, the present version of the internet and the version where everything started, the version that we have today, and the version that we are going towards, I don't know where, but... Well, I think, like, at the beginning, everything, everything was pretty much decentralized, like we were saying, open source and free, so uh, free source. Um, but then, yeah, maybe with the time, we reach into a point where really um like we said several times like identities are around platforms so mm -hmm. it's really users who are around the platforms and the platform is the main center and now we are going back 
um, maybe not going back, but advancing, or we are going to a step where, where, where um, really we can play, I would say we can play a, um, a more important uh, function. So in a way that the platforms are going around the user, not the mm -hmm. user around the platform. So we can, let's call, centralize the information on the user and then recovering this control of our own identity and not being subjected to the different platforms, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think it has also to do with who has the ownership, the digital ownership of, of the identity, no? Because of course, physically it belongs to you, but when you translate yourself into the digital space, you have to rely on someone who helps you being there. At the moment, I think that is quite centralized the way you access to the internet. Yes. And it wasn't like that in the beginning. I, exactly. Sometimes it's, it's useful to rely on someone who provides you with everything you need, but sometimes this has a price and the price is that you lose part of the ownership of yourself and mm -hmm. you start understanding that, hey, I don't like this and I don't like that. And I don't like have all my information here, there, over there too. And everybody knows about me more than even myself, no? Exactly. And I think that maybe a vision for the future could be providing the people with the tools to be able to to own their own physical and digital identity. And maybe this this is more or less what is still to come, no? The and decentralization. Like the, the way of how you share the information and this third party, how is it how is sharing your information with the next third party that you don't even control, right? Because when you share the information with Facebook, Facebook finally is selling to a third party. So at the end, your information is in hands of people who you don't even sign to. You, know? mm -hmm. you never register it on that platform, but they have your information already. Um, but I think it's really interesting also the, how we are starting to reach this, this immersive internet where we as users are starting to, to have more yeah, more important so to be in the center of the of the equation. I don't know if mm -hmm. it's the right now in, in English. Um, and how we approach all this internet that is coming and how we can, I mean, I, I think you know already, but um, this concept of self-sovereign self identity and how the, the different entities that you are working with um, can be entities uh, with pos like with possibility of validation uh, over certain certain data mm -hmm. related to you. And the fact that, um, for example, if if a government issue an ID card for you, but then you share this ID card with a bank, and then so the bank have your bank account and then the ID card, and then you use this bank account and this ID card to register in a telephone company. So at the end, this telephone company can be also an auto, uh, authoritative um, entity that can that can guarantee that you are these people on the ID or these people um, or this bank account is yours mm -hmm. because they use it already, you know. And how this is giving again much more power to the user and and the options of validating themselves without having to be relying always in the same type of entities mm -hmm. or governments in this case. So it's a bit scary, eh? Um, Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe not only about our identity, because I think the metaverse, the metaverse is not only about projecting yourself inside, but also what you do inside this digital world. And I think that there is a very, very interesting thing that is when you act inside the metaverse and you do this and that and you modify what's what's there and you create something and you design something and you project that into the metaverse and you create worlds and things and objects and fantastic things there these things belongs to you because you are the creator okay. i think that that's also have to do with centralization versus decentralization it's not only who's the owner of the platform but also who's the owner of the creation inside the platform. If, and if you are able to have that or decide about that with independence of the owner, if there is an owner of the place where everything is happening. I think it should belong to the community because finally the community 
is making it happen. And I think this is quite interesting. Above all, if we are thinking about design, if you are the creator that is collaborating with the, with this ecosystem to create something nice, yeah. it's not only something that starts and finishes when the creation is made by for first time, no? The first time is like a scenario that is there and you start mm -hmm. acting. You are like an actor mm -hmm. that goes onto the stage and start mm -hmm. his speech about something wonderful mm -hmm. and an empty stage is nothing, no? For me, the metaverse in the beginning is just a stage where you have to attract relevant so and interesting people. So you, you say we are talking about the metaverse, but what's for you the metaverse? Yeah, it's complicated. It's, I, I think there are like different elements. It's, some, it's a permanent layer, digital layer. Mm -hmm. It's always there, independently of you. If you are not there, the metaverse is there. It's co-created. It's not something finished. Mm -hmm. It's there and, and it can evolve depending on the things that people coming to the metaverse are doing. It's interconnected. Sometimes economies happens, they happen inside. So people are able to earn a living from the metaverse because they do something relevant and valuable for other people. But then you see the metaverse as a, a group of different platforms or as one software or one platform? No, I, think, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a connection, no? I think, yeah. I think it's going to be like a, an, another strange word, multiverse, more than a exactly. metaverse, but multiverse exactly. formed by different metaverse. And I don't know, Fortnite on one side and on the other side is going to be, I don't know. Um, I think this is also connected with the identity again, because at the end, on these several worlds or metaverses from the multiverse, probably you use each platform for a different um, occasion or for a different um, target, right? Um, or a different topic. I mean, when probably if you want to buy something, you will go to a special platform mm -hmm. done for, for sales or for buying online. And if you want to spend some time playing, then you will go into a game. But definitely, maybe if you go to a business meeting, you don't want to be with the same identity yeah. and not even the same environment that mm -hmm. you are when you are playing, right? So I think all this multiverse concept is really interesting and, and the identity can be the tool that connects all these metaverses mm -hmm. and link them together um, again on the, on, the, on the, the user itself. So at the end, depending on, on what you want to do, you will navigate or browse somehow, like, just like the internet now, no? you can navigate through, through a browser and visit different websites there would be or there could be some kind of metaverse browser that then you can check different worlds and different spaces and and then at the same time project yourself with different identities depending on where you go an identity an aspect has to do also with fashion i think Definitely. Uh, what's the role of fashion in a digital in a digital world where there is no there is no fabric, there is no something you can touch. Yeah, but I think we, we are talking, again, you said before this economy, metaverse economy, that we can call um, direct to avatar, right? Mm -hmm. I think we yeah. talked about this already. Um, so I think it's really interesting to see the approach that some brands are taking on when it comes to metaverse too or immersive worlds and the, the how they how they are thinking about this all new business model, let's call it, and and the approach of not only using the digital like as a try on to then sell on the physical world, but also as a as a way of revenue itself without mm -hmm. having to have it uh, physically, right? Or just like Valenciaga or that uh, in Fortnite, that they can sell products inside the game and it doesn't have to be really necessary yeah. to have them outside, right? So I think it's really interesting also on the design because at the end there can be a lot of designers that focus on this digital part without having to cross the line to the physical world maybe. I think there are so many opportunities there if you have if you are a talented designer for example at the present moment if you have to turn that design into physical you need so many things you need you need well 
Uh, let's imagine the, 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 the different parts of the process that you have to comply with. If you are a talented designer nowadays and you have ideas, for example, to create a relevant design for a target group, you, you could offer your design, for example, to a video game or to a metaverse so that if it's full of value, you can sell pure design, I would say. You don't exactly. need to turn that the into, digital, into design, in digital. Yeah. you don't need to turn that into physical. And maybe even if you are able to prove that there is value in your design, then the opportunity for turning that into physical comes there. Exactly. Uh, and it's going to be someone, it's going to be a, an Inditex, a, a Valenciaga, a, a, I don't know, different type of brands that are going to say, okay, this is this has been a success in Fortnite, so I'm going to I'm going to put a machine of making physical things on and I'm going to produce it. And I think it's so so different from, from And it's past. going over just being a marketing tool. So it it it's really useful. It's not just marketing to be on Fortnite or to be on Roblox, mm -hmm. but it really have a usability, no? And mm -hmm. and and they can get some feedback on them and, and even this Fortnite um, thing is interesting because I was talking to a friend the other day and, and she told me that uh, her daughter um, was asking her to buy some Balenciaga and it's something that it never happened before to her like she was saying oh, I don't I don't even know how she got to know Balenciaga and then she find out that it was for for Fortnite but I think it's a really interesting approach also for designers and speci especially clothing. What would Pascal think today if he had access to a metaverse and could project himself <laughs> as an avatar without his nose and his ears and his eyes walking or not walking? Well, but what what part of you makes you? Yeah. You know, like that's something that we need to think about. Like 